gearheads, thanks for tuning in. On this episode of Dan's Garage, Dan's going to show you how to rebuild an air cylinder for a rim clamp on a tire machine. Hey Dan, run that intro! Hey gearheads, thanks for tuning in. If you're here to find out how to rebuild an air cylinder for Coates tire machine, you're in luck because that's what we're going to do today. If you want to see the entire video, click on that card up there. If you're just here for the cylinder, let me show you how I got it apart first and then we'll come back here and we'll put it back together. Alright, so I shut the compressor off as this is winding down. What I figured out is that when the clamps are in, it's leaking from the end here, which I think is an easy seal. I may need a shaft uh, because the shaft looks kind of eaten. Also, you can see here the hose looks like it's been going against the hose. Okay, I have a plan. I sound like Tommy Boy. So there's four bolts here that hold the turntable on. The clamps are just connected to the mechanism by bolts that brings them in and out but this does have four air blasters. So when you're filling a tire, if you step on the um, air insert, the air filler valve, if you push it all the way down, it'll blast air here into the tire to bring the tire down and help seed, seat the bead. Um, that is controlled by these, which are pretty much hard-lined onto here. There's no fitting. You just gotta unscrew this from there. So the plan is to remove these four bolts that hold on the clamps and then once I remove that I can basically I have enough room on these to slide the clamp off and then I can actually just lay it down I don't have to deal with it or I can unscrew this once I get the clamp off because I can spin the clamp off of this I can spin this off of that I can spin that off of that if I need to but that's part two um, part one is getting this out of the way these clamps will be out of the way that will give me access to this guy, and then I could just take these two lines off, one on each end. I should be able to pull this off and go ahead and rebuild it. All right, guys, I realized after I shot that that the reason this is loose is these are kind of press fit. So this little ring, if you just push on it in, you can pull these hoses right out. So if you want to pull these out, you can do that. Also, if you need to replace them, obviously it's pretty easy. These springs are just on there to keep it from getting messed up. When you're putting them back in, all you do is push and make sure it goes in all the way. That's it. So here's a little halftime show. So I got these off of the end. The bolts just came out nice and easy. Um, this one, I did have to disconnect the nut from here. Um, I was able to put a wrench on this, so that helped that from spinning. And then I was able to bring this out to get the bolt out. Now here's something interesting. These do come off, which is good because this one, I cannot get the bolt out because the cylinder is here and there's not enough play in this. So what I'm gonna do is loosen that bolt up. And like I said, what I can do is I can take this off. So that will allow this to slide once I get the bolt off the back. And then these, I'm just gonna have to pull off when I take the turntable off. So when I put the turntable on, I need to remember to slide these in, to have that bolt on to get these on the end before I do that. Or I may just have to watch this video backwards. So uh, I'm gonna take the bolt off of the back of the piston housing there and then get these four off and this should lift up and while that's lifting up I'll be able to move those out of the way. That's the plan anyway. Oh. Alright, looks like this whole operation comes off together. So I think I'm going to move this clamp 
And we'll just put these, well here, see if I can slide this guy off. Yep. If I move it a little bit, put that over there. And then this one should slide off. We'll put that over there. And hopefully we know where they go. And then this whole thing stays together. So what I just did was useless. But let me get this out of the way. Well, that was easy. So with that out of the way, now all I really have to do is take these two hoses off of this cylinder. Then I can go ahead and open this up. This just has four long rods like any other hydraulic or air cylinder. This will pop off and then this whole shaft will come out. There's a seal inside there. And obviously there's going to be probably a seal here. And I don't think there's one at the other end. But we're going to open it up and we're going to find out. So this cylinder seems pretty easy. Like I said, it's just two end caps and a round piece of pipe, really. There's nothing special about that. What is special is the plunger that's in there. Um, but these are just really long bolts with a nut on the end. Uh, these are a little smaller, so I'm going to be careful. And of course, once I take this thing apart, I'll clean the whole thing up and probably repaint it before I put it on so it's nice and pretty, and then we'll get to the other stuff on the outside. I'm going to leave these fittings on. I will uh, re-thread these ends just to make sure everything's nice and clean. And uh, let's open it up and see what it looks like. So we can pull this end off. And the nice thing about being air and not hydraulic, I guess we'll get these out first, we'll clean these up a little bit, is that you don't have to worry about hydraulic fluid getting everywhere because it's just air. Hopefully there's nothing in here. Shouldn't be. Um, so we'll just pop this off. There we go. And ugh, as you can see, it's pretty nasty inside here. Um, it does have an o-ring, so that's the seal on this end is this o-ring, and I know there's rebuild kits for these um, But we'll clean all this off too. I'm sure that's not helping with anything And then look at the inside. There's a lot of oil in here this Side has a seal as well, so got to kind of rock it off and This also has gunk all over it so we'll clean this up and there's a seal on the end there this goes in between i try to lay things out the way i take them apart and then take a picture that way i know how everything goes uh we see we've got here it says no and then it's painted over the price says don't take this apart but we know that we need to take it apart to So, yeah, this is just a, uh, a rubber, um, it's almost like a rubber wheel, and that's what seals on the inside of here. And I think the problem was this here is what was leaking. So there is a rubber seal in here. Look at the light so you can see what I'm talking about. So inside here is the seal for that shaft, and you can see how it's all broken up. I don't know if I put the light on it. So see that seal in there? You can see pieces missing and stuff. So that's why the air was leaking out of it. So I definitely know there's rebuild kits for these. So we'll go ahead and order a rebuild kit for this top piston. So I'm gonna clean some of the grease and the grime off of this. We'll use our super clean. And this is the foaming one. I find that this one works really well because it kind of sticks to where you put it. And this is nice because I can put it up and let it kind of sit there. And then we'll go ahead and take a brush and we're going to clean. Of course, this uh, O-ring we're going to take off, but this will allow us to clean up all these areas. And I did find a rebuild kit and I have it on order, so that should be here shortly. And not shortly, like in five minutes, but, you know, uh, by the time I'm done cleaning this, because that'll be the next scene that you see. Magic of television, people. So, um, this... Degreasing is a big part of rebuilding something. Even though this is not a car, you want something to work, you clean it up. So we'll clean this up and come back and show you what it looks like when I'm done. So here's a before and an after. And uh, while it's not completely perfectly clean, if I had a parts washer, I could throw it in there and I could probably clean it up a little bit better, but I don't have one right now. I just have super clean and an oil change bin. So uh, that definitely looks better than that. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, clean the rest of this. I didn't take the gasket off, although I'm pretty sure these are the same gaskets, but I'm just gonna leave it all together until I get the kit. So I'm gonna clean this one up and then uh, clean the rest of it up. 
So I cleaned this off and I thought it was interesting. It says clamping cylinder, tighten nuts snug, then loosen a third of a turn. Nuts must not be tight. So that's pretty important if you're rebuilding one of these cylinders, I guess, because it's air, not hydraulic. It just needs, um, it seals with the O-rings, not with tightness. So we have this up here. We have the new gaskets, the new piston. So we got the super lube and let's go ahead and put it back together. So I was able to find um, a downloadable program that had a breakdown of all the parts, a lot of the information, as well as uh, torque specs and things like that. And this is really handy for what we're doing. So tabletop cylinder, that's us over here. Um, and then this was really useful for uh, figuring out what the torque needed to be on the basket, torque to 175. It also tells you where to apply grease. Um, so obviously uh, up here, but that's already together. So we'll just kind of squirt that a little bit. It does say to grease the uh, tabletop as well for where the sliders go for the rim clamp. So we'll do that too. But for now, we are going to be concentrating on this. Got my medical inspection gloves on and looking at all the parts as you should do, I realized there's two seals on here and I was like, that's not for me. And then I realized that there is a, a split in there. So this big one is gonna go in the back here uh, like that. And then this one is gonna go on the other side. So let's go ahead and do that first. Let me show you what I'm talking about. You can see that split in there. So we'll, uh, we'll pick this guy out. Yeah, I'll just kind of grab that out of there and let me get that a little wipe. So this is going to go in just like the other one came out. And basically just push it into your, in here until the catches the groove that's pretty much it on that we will grease this before we put the uh, whole thing back together and then this one is going to go in just like this just kind of squeeze it in there oh actually no i'm going to grease it first and we'll open up our grease And we'll go ahead and basically all of the rubber seals, you want to give them a healthy dose of grease. That'll keep them flexible, keep them from seizing up, drying up, all that stuff. And after you do that, your hands are all greasy and you can't pick up the part, but we'll see what we can do. So this is just going to go in here like this. And... Once it's in that groove, it should be happy, but of course to get it in here, just gotta kinda get the squeeze in. And once it gets all the way in, it should be happy. And now that's got a little lubrication on the inside. Since we have some on our finger, we'll hit that inner piece too. And then third one here is gonna be this O-ring. Once you get two of these O-rings, We'll take a little bit of grease and then just kind of run it around through your fingers. Now you should look online for other information because I'm not an expert and this is the first one I'm doing, but I did a lot of research on how to grease things and whatever. So this just kind of goes right around here. And again, that'll fit right in the channel. And this one's all set to go. And then we just have the other one my greasy fingers all over this tube also so we'll have to clean that up but that's okay so we're just going to grease this one and send it through just kind of run it around run it through and then same thing just kind of lip it on the bottom and then just follow it around and there we go and that's all set so that's for that. This little ring, um, you don't need unless you're working on the other, um, the one for the top, uh, for the bead breaker. Uh, that's what this one is for. So we do not need that since we're working on this cylinder. Other than that, I uh, just want to make sure that the washer is on the outside and 
this is going to be on the end of this. Um, well, I guess it doesn't matter if I get this all greasy because this is going to be inside anyway. So we'll just take this off and see one side is rubber, one side is washer. So the washer goes on the outside. And we're just going to press that on there. And make sure it doesn't mess up the threads. This is going to go till it's basically snug in here. You don't have any, um, any gap in there. And then this just goes here. And this we do have to torque to 40 foot pounds. So there is a spot on the bottom of the shaft that has two flat spots. So you can put that in a vise or you can put a wrench on that or whatever. That will help you to tighten this, um, which needs to be torqued to, do, 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 do. this doesn't say, um, it's probably on the other page. Oh wait, wait, oh sorry. Uh, so this is going to be a quarter to a half turn loose. So again, this is not going to be torqued down. It's just meant to hold the, um, the rim clamp. So this one's not torqued, but you do want to hold this and you got to torque this one down. So I'm going to go ahead and torque this to what I say, 40 foot pounds and come right back. All right. So I got that torqued down. Uh, this is going to be a joint effort between the gloves. Um, so this one is going to be using all the wet stuff. This one's going to do the dry stuff. So I got these figured out how they need to go on. So I'm going to go ahead and grease this up, grease the inside of this. I'll put the plunger in here and then we'll put the ends together and we got the nuts and bolts over there. I may switch gloves again uh, after that. So who knows, but um, we're going to start by kind of greasing the inside of this and I'm going to kind of give a lot to this because we definitely want the, the piston plunger to really sit well in here and be very happy. Remember this is air moving this, so gotta have a lot of air pressure in here. I don't know. I feel like I'm just saying a bunch of gibberish. So we're going to grease this up real nice also, make sure it's got all the protection it needs. I'm going to do the sides also, just for protection, make sure it's going to stay pliable and rubbery because this basically moves every time you clamp a tire, a rim on or take a rim off. So. All right, with that done, I'm going to Let's see if we can do this with one hand. I'll go ahead and get this started in here. Oh. All right, so that's in there. And uh, all right, it's got two. Um, I did see this. I think I posted this in the other video too. It says, Clamping cylinder, tighten nuts snug, and then loosen three quarters of a turn. They must not be tight. So remember that. Don't make this too tight. Um, let me get this glove off. And we'll go to all mechanical gloves. So these have to sit a certain way too. So I actually did go back and look at my first video <laughs> to see how they go on. So this is going to slide right on the cylinder here. And we definitely want to make sure that this is sealed right. All right, so now we got this on here. Feels nice and snug. I'm watching my original video. I know that this piece goes up and the hose is at the back. Now here, we do have to push it in around the O-ring, so you definitely want to just make sure you're giving everything a little bit of rotation as you put it together. Make sure it's all the way in. Oh, that's not going to help because I'm trying to push up against this. Oh, I can do this. So let me go ahead and make sure this is down all the way. There we go. So that's nice and snug. 
and then this one is going to go the other way. So you can see these are at the top of each one. That's, I believe, for the uh, clamps to uh, hold them from going one way or the other. So this, same thing, we're just going to kind of rotate it around, push it gently. You definitely don't want to mar this guy up or cut it in any way. A little bit of pressure. Again, rotate it, make sure it's going to be sealed all the way. All right. So now, okay. So everything is uh, press fit. I'm just going to double check to make sure that it's all snug, which it is. We're going to double check and make sure that these uh, points are, are at the top, which is good. And then we're going to go ahead and take our nuts and bolts and we're going to put them in and snug them and then turn back three quarters of a turn. And another thing I want to point out, these are nylock nuts. So if you look at them, they have the little nylon inside them. That basically, if you don't know about nylock, that takes the place of putting a uh, spring washer or lock washer in there. So that's why they're stating that you don't have to really torque these down because that nylock will hold it. Once you snug it up and then loosen it a little bit, it'll be just fine. So I'm gonna go ahead and tighten these and then we're ready to put it back on the basket. All right, I had to uh, adjust this because nobody told me that I had my decal like right under the bolt. So I like things to make sense. So we did that and I did verify by uh, a shot, a still shot in the first video taking it apart that this is the way it goes. So basically just know that these two points go up. Uh, this one does actually ride on the, um, on the clamp. There's those two positions, uh, it goes the other way. Uh, this one obviously doesn't, only when it's in, when it's out, the piston's gonna be out here. So it goes like this and what I can do is I can hook up these air hoses now and then I have to put the tabletop back on and put two of these on while I'm doing that so I'll just let the video roll maybe put some music on and you can laugh at that. So I got this all ready to go and we do need to make sure that these arms are all at least separated into each of the basket openings. This is obviously off from where it needs to be, but that's, I'll show you why I did that in a minute. So now we have these points, where's the other one? Um, and I did, uh, I put some some of the o-ring grease just right along this channel and on the inside when this is down i'll go ahead and put it on the tops too actually i'm going to put it on the tops now because we do have to put two of these clamps on in order to rotate it to get them on the um on the piston so this one i believe is the most important but let me get that done now as we're sliding this in we have to keep in mind where these arms are because there's an arm in each basket um, that goes to each corner. So we need to make sure the bolt comes through here and then up through here and then this will go on the top. So as this is all sliding around, we'll slide the bolt in first. And then can adjust that. Make sure that bolt is seated all the way down. This does have this little pin that holds it from rotating out of the way. So we can get this started. Once it's snug, you can tighten it later with a wrench. So we'll leave that like that. And then we can get this one in and on here as well with the bolt. So there's a good angle for you to see what we're doing here. So we can slide this one up a little bit. There we go. And just enough to get the piston through that and we can put the nut on the back. So I had to get a new nut because I guess I lost one. Now for this back portion, you see we said there was a hole in here and there's a pin locator at the top of the piston. 
So I wanna make sure that is set before you tighten this up. You shouldn't have any gap here. And that's to keep the cylinder from rotating because if it rotated, that would be bad. And then we're just gonna tighten this down here. Uh, let's just make it snug. Didn't say anything about a torque on that, so we're not gonna worry about it. And then this front one is just gonna slide. Make sure your other arms are where they need to be. Actually, maybe we'll pull these out. Oh, no, we to push them in. All right, so we'll push that in. And then this is just gonna get snugged on here. Now I was able to move this hose a little bit so it's not chafing on the piston because that did seem like it was an issue. So I'll go ahead and get this set. And then we'll put the other two arms on and we'll lock those in to these other two. And then I think we'll be in good shape to power it up and see how we're doing. Oh yeah, I have to bolt that down too, I guess. So um, I don't think it matters which order I do this in. These, like I said, these had enough. Oh no, yay. Uh, these had enough play that I was able to take them off and put them back on. So I just need bolt. And the top claw, these have enough room to uh, get in here with a socket or a wrench, so I'm not too worried about putting these on later. Like I said, we still do need to tighten up the other ones. Uh, this is not getting located. There we go. Now it's up. So we can go ahead and tighten that. Do you tighten it up or tighten it down? The things that confuse me about stuff. All right, now, before we can tighten any of these up, we need to put the bolts down in the table that's gonna move. So let's get you a new angle. And this should be the last step, is just putting these four Allen cap bolts back in. Just gotta make sure it's lined up with the basket, which shouldn't be too bad. And I'm going to have to check that paperwork and see if these have a torque spec on them. Let me get the ratchet. Okay, so these do have a torque spec. It's 20 to 35. Not a big range there, but these are holding the wheel to the motor. So I assume that makes sense. I should have put this on my drill. But you know what? Sometimes it's nice just to have hand tools be doing stuff with your hands and not using power. However, power is nice, but we'll get these tightened up and then I'm going to torque them down and we should be ready to air it up and see how I did. Yay. All right, I tightened up these clamps. So by my calculations, I think we're ready to turn on the air compressor. Let's air it up and see if it's still leaking. And if so, where do we need to go next? And make sure that I fix the ones that were broken. Guys, I'm pretty excited. I'm not going to lie. I just plugged in the air and this thing didn't even turn on. It filled up and that's what I hear. There's a tiny little hiss. Um, so I'll have to see where that's coming from. But let's see if this thing moves around and uh, the clamps go in and out and it doesn't freak out. All right, so here's one thing I realized in watching this when I was editing it. So this note is for the clamping cylinder nuts, which is these guys. So you wanna tighten these down and then loosen them three quarters of a turn. These guys actually do need to be torqued. And all that information is on this paperwork, which I will leave a link to in the description. So that noise you heard leaking was one of these fittings, which is on the coupler, which I have another video coming out soon on that. So with all that being said, this is the end of this quick little episode. I say quick, it's almost a half an hour, but uh, basically a step-by-step -step on how to get that top air cylinder off, rebuild it, and put it back on. Um, again, I do apologize for the little mistakes, things I say, but I do have the paperwork here. Try to correct them. So if you notice anything else that I screwed up in this episode, put something down in the comments below. I'll also have um, the links to the rebuild kit and the link to the paperwork. There's also some links to some other cool YouTube channels you should check out. If you're interested in the full rebuild channel, there'll be a 
uh, video links at the end of this to the full rebuild channel and also once I get it up the coupler video and there's also going to be a video on taking the basket off because that seems to be a really hard thing that no one has been able to figure out or put a video upon so I do have one of those coming up and I have uh, dismounted and remounted some tires already and the thing's working great so I may be rebuilding the pedals soon I gotta see the rotations a little weak I think that's why they went to electric in later models but for now that's pretty much it so thanks for watching stay positive and keep on wrenching